Um, and I think, yeah, I think it's it's important that we sort of understand. I, I someone that tends to switch off when we talk about, you know, trade deals and pharmaceuticals and, and I, but actually I've, I've started to, um, I mean, I've been looking into this, I started looking into this last year when there was that discussion about, I don't know if you remember the cystic fibrosis drug that was being denied, the NHS couldn't buy it because it they couldn't afford it. And then I started to look at how, how you know, actually how corrupt our pharmaceutical model is. Um, and, you know, most medical research receives a lot of public funding um, and, and the vaccines have done. There's been, you know, millions of UK government put millions of pounds into funding these vaccines. And yet the, the pharmaceutical companies have exclusive rights over these vaccines. Um, and, you know, as Nick said, that they have they have due to these um, patent laws and due to intellectual property laws, they can they are refusing to share the knowledge of how um, they make their vaccines and then they're able to operate these monopolies and charge you know, extortionate amounts for these vaccines. Um, and and it, it's even, you know, even more, I think it's, it's, it's really frustrating when, you know, we keep hearing that, you know, UK is celebrating how many vaccines it's giving to people. Um, and UK, as Nick said, was, has then also, whilst doing that, undermined these global efforts to um, improve access to vaccines and get vaccines to poorer countries. And um, so what, you know, what Nick was, was talking about, you know, if we can, if we had a global access to patents, so if we um, force the pharmaceutical companies to share their knowledge about how they, um, how they make these vaccines, then we can not only um, make the vaccines more affordable to poorer countries, but, they could, but also scale up, massively scale up production. Um, and it's, there was a really good report that showed that if, if we had fair vaccine access globally, unlike what we have now, it would prevent 60% of deaths rather than the current system, which is preventing less than 30% of deaths. So it's really, you know, I think it's, it's pretty shocking that we, you know, again, like many things, um, we have sort of corporate greed that is, that is, you know, corporate greed and, you know, just going after profit costing people's lives here. Um, and just the last point that I want to make uh, about the HIV pandemic, because I think there's a lot of things that we can learn from the HIV pandemic and actually we made a lot of mistakes um, with COVID and the same mistakes that we, met, we did with the HIV pandemic. But in the, you know, as, as Nick said, in the 90, you know, HIV was a death sentence. Um, and then in the mid 1990s, we had the anti, you know, the miracle of antiretroviral drugs, which not only saved lives, you know, stopped people from dying from HIV, but it also prevents you transmitting the virus. Um, so it was in the mid 1990s that, these, that we had these drugs and the, in, and the innovation for these drugs. Um, and yet for another 10 years, rates, numbers of deaths globally from HIV continued to increase. Um, and in 2019, and you know, the year before COVID, we had 1.7 million people globally acquire new HIV infections. So all of those infections should have been preventable. We have the science, we have the drugs there to prevent that. Um, but as a result, again, of corporate power and corporate greed and also their influence on governments, um, you know, we're still in this situation. Um, but finally, you know, as what we can learn from the HIV pandemic, that it was activism and it was, you know, global solidarity and pe normal people on the ground who put pressure on the pharmaceuticals to lower their prices for the drugs. Um, it took too long, but it can work. So I think that's something urgently we need to be doing right now. As, um, as Nick said, we need to be getting behind the people's vaccine and ensuring that you know, people's lives are put before profit.